So when you think South America, you think Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Peru, the more adventurous might think Paraguay, Uruguay, Bolivia. When you think of the Caribbean, you think of Jamaica, you think of Bahamas, Barbados. But there are three countries, territories, on the top of South America on the Caribbean coast. Guiana, Suriname, and French Guiana. And other than people of a certain age who can remember the stories around Jonestown and the 900 or so who killed themselves, Guiana doesn't hit the public consciousness, nor does Suriname, nor does French Guiana. People not always realizing that's different from Guiana. So let's call these three the Forgotten Three. And what you find the first thing in the Forgotten Three, like here in Guiana, is there's so much jungle. 65% of this country is jungle. Borders Venezuela, and Venezuela still claims about a third of the territory of Guiana. It borders Brazil. You can drive up there and into the Amazon rainforest. Some of the most amazing virgin jungle you can find. Unfortunately, being a little bit shy, this what looks like a, well, you can see now it's not a rock or a log, is a manatee. Manatee is a water living mammal. That's a herbivore, often called a sea cow. Now this is pretty cool. Even though Guiana is on the mainland of South America, it's considered part of the Caribbean. So much so that its cricketers play for the West Indies. The most famous son, Clive Floyd. So while Guiana clearly tracks its colonial heritage to the British, hence why they play cricket, here in Suriname next door, the heritage is more Dutch. Although the British and the Dutch did fight over it during the 1600s, and it wasn't until the Peace of Breda in 1667 that brought an end to the Second Dutch-British War, Suriname officially became Dutch by the British giving up their claim, and in return, the Dutch gave up their claim to New Amsterdam. Interestingly, the modern name for New Amsterdam is New York City. Who got the better side of that deal? So the Dutch heritage can be seen around Parimarabo, the capital city of Suriname. Clearly, the gabled roofs are needed to keep all the snow off. Some of the buildings require a little bit more work than others, but the Dutch architectural heritage is clear. By the way, I love this little park in the middle of the city. So in the 1600s, this was Holland's place to have their sugar plantations. They ended their slavery relatively late in the late 1800s. In the 1950s, Suriname became a constituent country and part of the Dutch Kingdom, and in the 1970s gained its full independence. And this is the presidential palace, the only one I know anywhere in the world that's made of wood. Could be wrong. I'm not sure why everyone has an I heart sign these days, but they seem to. Suriname is 90% rainforest, which makes it the most enjungulated country in the world. If enjungulated is a word, I'll be really surprised, and if it's not, it can be now. I'll claim credit. Suriname is the smallest country in South America, both by population and size, with about 600,000 people and a little above 160,000 square kilometers by area. And Suriname is the only country outside Europe in which Dutch is the official language. So I'm on a little boat, just leaving Suriname, heading over to Europe. No, not that Europe, this Europe. Yeah. French Guiana is part of Europe because French Guiana is part of France. Yep, France. So if you've got the British influence in Guyana, particularly through the cricket, and the Dutch influence in Suriname through the architecture, there's no doubt that the French influence is here in French Guiana. And I need to remind you, it's not French influence, it's France. Under French law, their overseas territories are fully integral component parts of France, which is why here you get the French flags and the EU flags. This is a member of the European Union in South America, in the Caribbean. Now, while Guiana and Suriname are independent countries, French Guiana still has the strong feeling of being a colonial outpost right down to the fact that the letterboxes are French and it probably has that feeling because it is still a colonial outpost. Anyway, lots of jungles, it's got some nice beaches, it's hot and humid and a lot of mosquitoes, just a lot like next door. This is French Guiana, the last of the forgotten three. I've been here, you don't have to now.